Good evening, folks. This is K5LYN. We get together here on Wednesday evenings and talk about the early days of single sideband. We call this the Boat Anchors Unlimited Net. We're uh, specializing in vintage radio and people that are interested in what we're doing. Whether or not you're on a vintage radio, you're certainly welcome. That is to say, uh, maybe you'll learn something, and one of these days you'll pick up a Swan or a National or a Central Electronics Exciter and decide to join us in the wonderful realm of vacuum tube radio. Buy, sell trades are appropriate if they're vintage radio related. And if you have a radio that has a problem and you need some technical advice, I can tell you that there's a tremendous amount of expertise uh, present here tonight. And uh, we've all exchanged ideas with each other about how to fix our radios. And most of mine are on the air because of things people told me about how to make them work. All right, uh, we're gonna, we've got a long list of earlies. And I'm going to take uh, about eight of them or so. I'm going to give it to Jay. He's going to take about eight of them or so. We get two earlies in, then we'll give it to Rusty, and he'll take a new list of check-ins. So be patient. Uh, if you didn't get on the early list, we'll get to everybody. N5JJI. Hey, talk to us, Ed. K5LYN. Good grief. I made it to the top of the list. Uh, this is N5JJI, Ed, in New Braunfels. And talking to you on my... Uh, Relatively new used uh, uh, Shure 505C microphone into an HW101 uh, over to a SB201 Heathkit amplifier and out the window to an inverted V up about 45 feet. And that's, uh, that's the report from this end. Back to you, uh, Lynn. Outstanding signal, Ed. Nice work on that station. It's doing a great job for you. Any new projects in the works or anything out there you uh, think you need to add to that collection? Well, I would say one thing. that when You were talking about Electra Voice uh, microphones, and uh, I have an M26U that has the appearance of being very old. <laughs> hi, hi. Probably because it is. But I don't have anything to put it on. It's a high impedance microphone, and if anybody would like to uh, to fool around and put it on the air, uh, I'm good on QRZ. Okay, that's a nice offer. That's a nice offer. I was on here last night checking microphones. I keep coming back to the Sure 444. I try to escape it, but it hadn't worked yet. All right, Ed, good to hear from you. And uh, we will uh, press on here. WB1E, Doug, Doug, talk to us. Yeah, hello everybody, uh, Rusty, uh, Lynn, and uh, Jay, uh, and all around the Boat Anchors Net, this is Doug, WB1E. I'm uh, talking tonight on the old Swan 500 again, and uh, the B unit is right here, not a foot away. And uh, I've had some ideas lately, but uh, I've been working on the GI7 amplifier uh, today, and I'm uh, currently uh, using some silicone adhesive to attach silicone material in order to get the, the, the air uh, boot uh, flowing uh, and ar arranged correctly. So still working on, on some stuff, uh, not exciting as it could be, but uh, uh, in any event, uh, I took my 4 to 1 ballon off and, uh, and had to lengthen the wires on the inverted V about 4 or 5 feet, uh, and I got the SWR down to about 1.2. Uh, and so uh, easily, easily uh, enjoyable. So uh, my pattern hasn't changed, Lynn. I'm, I'm still pointed right at you. So <laughs> and I hope you're enjoying that uh, Rocky Mountain uh, spring water. Anyway, yeah, it'd be a, it, the day I get back up to Durango will be a great time. I guarantee. So and a little help from the Henry uh, two, three, five hundred Z's doing uh, eight hundred to uh, about maybe a peaking up to. 1K, uh, and that's it, uh, PEP. So, um, yeah, uh, they're running a 638 uh, uh, in Electro Voice EV638 for the microphone. And my favorite uh, gray plate Telefunken for the audio tube going into this. Man, I'll tell you, those things, if you can get one, they will make a big difference. So, all right, well, I'll turn it back to you guys. Oh, by the way, uh, Lynn, uh, you can find those rocker switches. They just mount up a little differently. But if you're any good
good, you can make them work. So even with pilot lights, they're not that expensive, just eight, nine bucks. So they're all over the Internet. So, all right, Lynn, I'll turn it back to you. This is WB1E. I've heard that discussed, but never have proceeded, uh, proceeded on that, uh, Doug. Hey, did you say something about Durango? Yeah, yeah, just uh, it'd be great to great time to go back up there. And oh, by the way, uh, Ed, you were plus twenty five over that time. You were one of the louder signals on the band. Yes, Durango. Did you used to live there or what? No, no, I just love going there. That's all. I like going up to Silverton when it's not snowing. Oh, but the winter train to Dur to Cascade Canyon. I mean, we go nearly every year uh, because of the uh, steam train there. It's a wonderful place. Oh, that train is a blast. I mean, you gotta you gotta be able to have your wits about you when you're uh, it's oil fired, so it, it, it the fumes are a little intoxicating. But there's quite a bit of fumes up there that are intoxicating. I'll just leave it at that. That's the greatest train light train ride in this country, especially when it goes around the High Line and you're perched on the side of the mountain there. We'll talk about that, Doug. Didn't know you were a Durango and Silverton freak. I certainly am too. Moving on. I don't think Jeff is here. W five OMR, Jeff. Are you here? No, he came by earlier. Dan, W-O-Z, talk to us, K-5-L-O-I-N. Yeah, good evening, Lynn, and uh, everybody else in the boat anchors. And that's this Dan, K-W-O-Z in Houston. Uh, and the same thing I had last week. Uh, Kenwood, 830. Kenwood, 922. Uh, Kenwood, MC-50 microphone. And a uh, oh, oh. about 42 feet. I did work on this uh, 922, uh, resurrected it uh, over a period of about a month here. But uh, I had to do a little more work on it today, but uh, now it's, I think it just looks fantastic, works great. I got four 400s in it instead of three 500s, but that's because that's all I had. Anyway, it'll put out about 1,200 watts, but uh, I got it tuned down to about 1,000 here, so that's fine. And I did get a chance to spend a little time on the Loudon Bormer amplifier downstairs and uh, getting closer to having that blow some smoke. And also, I've got a, an eight, another 830 here that I've been working on. had all kinds of problems with it, and it's, it's coming around. I'll tell you what, somebody installed all kinds of claptrap in there, and I spent uh, about two weeks pretty much every day ripping that junk out of there, and it's finally coming around to being a usable radio. And that's about it from here, KWOZ. Yeah, Dan, when you talked about uh, trying to find out what somebody did there, we, we find ourselves being detectives all too often, and uh, uh, how, how skillful we are at that usually results in how soon we get the radio going. I've been there many times, and I know, know what you're going through. Good luck with that. Uh, any, any other comments for that, Dan? Uh, no. Uh, there was a uh, little sidewalk sale down here in Sugar Land last weekend instead of their usual ham fest. But uh, I thought it was very uh, favorable. It, uh, a lot of, there were about 40 pickup trucks and things there and a lot of people. Good time. Okay, great show. Sounds like it. All right, let's take to, uh, talk to my neighbor here up there in uh, Cedar Park, KC5 WLF. What's new, Jimmy? Oh boy, not me, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm about as old. I'm I'm older than my equipment for sure. Uh, good evening, Lynn, and I hope everybody's doing good today. I I feel good with this weather. You know, I mean, uh, how more perfect could you get than the weather we're having lately? Uh, you know, other than the wind, we did have some wind today. But um, anyway, you better enjoy it because. It, we don't have really good weather like that uh, that often. Anyway, good evening, everybody. I'm speaking to you on my old FT-101 Zulu Delta, and uh, that I, 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 I like using this old radio. But uh, I got a new uh, addition to the family. It's a, a FL-2000 that I bought, and uh, it looks to be doing pretty good. Uh, uh, Sure is about seven seven hundred peaks, five hundred average on uh, uh, on the output. So it's doing a really good job. And I'm using an off center fed dipole and a D104 amplified mic microphone that's just cracked just a little bit. And it, the ZD loves it because it's a very I don't 
don't know, a, a bassy sounding radio, and it really sparkled it up to put a D-104 on it. I don't think all radios sound good on all different mics. I think you have to have matched to, the, to each. 7-3 to everybody, and maybe we'll catch you next Wednesday, I hope. This is KC5 WLF, Cedar Park, back to the net. Very fine, very fine, Jimmy. And I agree with you about the microphones. I, right now, I'm in a situation where I have a D-104, and nobody will let me use it because it doesn't sound right on any of these radios. But I have used them for years, and they're great microphones. And you got a nice signal tonight. Okay, I thought I heard a call a while ago, and I don't know if he's really here or not. Did I hear N5 PF? Phil, Phil, are you there somewhere? What about it? K5LYN. N5 PF. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, how y'all doing? Hey, I'm hearing you fine. Bring us up to date. Ah, uh, well, I'm on a KWM2 with a SP200 and a high microphone and a uh, inverted V at 45 feet. Uh, that's what I got. Uh, that's about it. Best I can do right now. Got my uh, S1 line sitting there. Trying to save it. Built from 1958 to 1960. This KWM2 is uh, somewhere around 64, I think. And uh, uh, that uh, S line is just a beautiful piece of equipment. And uh, I like it better than this KWM2, but I don't want to wear it out. So I'm just letting it sit there and do nothing for a while. This is inside here, back in the net. Okay, Phil. Hey, I failed to mention when I was talking earlier at the beginning of the net, I'm on my Collins tonight, too. I usually keep this S3 line up on 20 meters, but I didn't have as much warm-up time as I like to have for the net, and so I pulled this Collins down from 20 meters because I know that it warms up faster than anything else and is more likely to say where it needs to be. So we're talking uh, Collins to Collins tonight. Any new projects, Phil, on your end? Over. Yeah, I missed a little bit of that. We got a storm just went through and a lot of static crashes, but uh, uh, no projects here. I'm, I'm staying out of everything. I'm getting too old to do projects, man. My hands don't work. Still got all my fingers. I'm a woodworker. And uh, they chopped up pretty good, but I still got them all. Uh, some of them don't work very good. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm retired of just about everything. I'm gardening, but... Uh, a radio is number one, so that's what I'm doing, and uh, I'm not going to work on anything. Keep my hands out of them, because they don't work good. Uh, and uh, back to you. This is F5 to you. I don't know. Okay, very fine, Phil. Great to hear you. No, I was just telling you I'm on my call-in station also tonight. Good to hear you. Okay, KL7CD. I bet that's another Collins, right? Hey, Mike, talk to us. K5LYN. And I'm here, too, W5OM. Okay, W5OMR, I heard him break in. I'll go ahead there, Lynn. Yeah, I am on the Collins tonight. A 32S1 transmitter, 75S1 receiver. have the original power supply, and the fuse is doing fine in that one so far. I'm using a 30L1 for an amplifier. Mic is a D104, and the antenna is a dipole up about 25 feet. And uh, it's fed with uh, coax. And so I hope everything's sounding okay. Okay, my latest project, as you know, Lynn, is my SX-101A Helicrafters. Uh, probably one of the most beautiful receivers, if not the most beautiful, in my opinion. What I love about it is when you change bands. I mean, this is one of the things I love about it. When you change bands, the light, that band lights up. So it's got, I guess, six or seven individual dial lights, and those change as you change bands and light up the correct band. And that's pretty cool. These were uh, manufactured back in the, uh, I think it was the late 50s, starting out. It was before the SX-117 or the SX-115, and it was teamed up with uh, HT-32. And the uh, 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 Helicrafters advertised those two rigs, uh, you know, like Sonny Liston or Muhammad Ali. They called them the heavyweight champion. I, they actually said that in their advertising. And believe me, they're heavy. And uh, the WOZ, the one that's got the Loudon Boomer, maybe you can comment later. 
But the Helicrafters made a, a, an amplifier that was either a Loudon Boomer or Loudon Boomer made an amplifier that was the, uh, I don't remember the designation on the Helicrafters, but it matches uh, the SX-117 HT-44 that I have here, and that would complete my Helicrafter station if I could get a hold of one of those. It would have to be in really good physical condition. Anyway, I might be interested if you're interested in fixing it and selling it. Back to you, Lynn. W-K-5-L-Y-N, uh, K-L-7, Charlie Delta. Okay, Mike. Hey, let's talk loud and boom, boomer a minute, and then we'll get back to uh, Dan there. But well, I'll tell you what I know about it. I think it started out as a homebrew amplifier in an article on maybe QST or CQ, and I think more than one company maybe started producing a few of them commercially. Hey, Dan, are you still there? Did you hear that uh, questions about the loud and boomer? Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I'm trying to think the name of that outfit that uh, made them in Chicago there. Uh, also, uh, uh, shoot, I don't even remember if this one I've got has the Helicrafters logo on it, but uh, I'm pretty sure it does. But I've had uh, at least three of them, and they're all quite a bit different. <laughs> I mean, faceplate looks pretty much the same, but there's a lot of differences between them. Uh, this one here is clearly not any collector's item in terms of appearance, probably never will be. I do know that Sammy has at least two more, maybe three more up there, and uh, all of them were in better shape than this one, so uh, there's there's some possibilities there, Mike. But, uh, you know, it's supposed to have a single 3-400Z in it, and the way... The way their manual describes you to run it, you don't ever want to run an amplifier like that. So they need some modification to make them usable by today's standards anyway. That's about it. Uh, God, I just can't think of the name of that other company, KWZ. Yeah, at Belton this past time, I uh, almost, I, I more or less gave one away. <laughs> and it was a loud and boomer that looked more like a Collins 30L1. It certainly wasn't Alcrafters, but I knew there's a variety of them about that uh, out there. Hey, uh, Mike, back to you right quick. KL7CD, talk to us. Okay, yeah, I was thinking it has a 3400Z in it. I've got a, actually a Tempo 2000. But originally it was made uh, by Helicrafters. And uh, Tempo, I, I guess, bought out the rights when Helicrafters were getting close to going out. In fact, if you remember, Lynn, we saw one at the uh, at the uh, Central Electronics get together up there in Tennessee, and it was an original uh, Helicrafters. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a Johnson. It has two, three, four hundred Z's in it. That's a Johnson. It wasn't a Helicraft. Anyway, I'm a little bit familiar with the 3400Z. It's just an earlier vi uh, version of the 3500, and of course, it doesn't have the plate dissipation, so it doesn't put out as much power. That's it from here, uh, Lynn, KL7, Charlie Delta, back to net. Okay, I, I think that uh, if you want to pursue that, uh, check with uh, W5DPP, Sammy, and see what uh, he has to tell you about him. You can follow up on that, Mike. Great to hear you. Beautiful work. By the way, Mike has done beautiful restoration on that Collins. S line. Y'all just heard he sent me several pictures as he was working on it. It's very, very nicely done. Okay, let me talk to, uh, hey, I'm going to talk to uh, OMR. Jeff came by a minute ago. Jeff, I called you earlier, then I'm going to talk to TXW, then I'll do one more, then I'll give it uh, to Jay. OMR, Jeff, talk to us. Well, good to hear you, Lynn, and uh, hello to you and everybody else on the net. K5LYN. There's a boat anchor. It's the greatest fire on amateur radio from W5OMR. And I'm using the uh, Kenwood TSX-90 as the VFO. And I'm driving that into the VFO input on the Viking 2. I'm on AM. Talking into the Viking 2 and putting out about a 100 watts of carrier. And uh, a little downward deflection on the audio, but that's what a Viking 2 does. That's about all I got. Uh, I got a double, um, well, I've, I've got two dial key relays in here, so I'm able to use the uh, transceiver as a receiver when I key up the vacuum two. The 110 volts uh, on the relays uh, activates both of them. So the uh, RF is shuttled out of the uh, Kenwood 
T is 690 into the VFO inside. The power is turned all the way down. Carrier is up about a notch or so, and that puts about three or four watts of RF into the VFO input, enough to drive the uh, grids of the 6146s. Now, we're using the same microphone, just a different EQ setting here, Lynn. Well, that's what's going on. The Kenwood TS690 is a VFO supplying uh, the frequency as well as being a receiver. Oh, and by the way, uh, John, WA5BXO, and I, we teamed up and uh, looked at and worked on it, and I had to go, and he finished up. Uh, I've got two good working Johnson VF122 uh, VFOs. And uh, when he gets time, he's still going to do some work on the VF-1. He's kidding. So, but whatever we he and I can hook up again, I'll have uh, two good working VF-122s to uh, to choose from to uh, marry up to the uh, old, good old vacuum tube. So back over to you, Lynn, K5LYN, and all the boat anchors. I'm out. Operating AM, ancient modulation, angel music, as I like to call it. This W5OMR Splendora. Okay. There's a comment, but I want to make one, too, right quick. Jeff, I would stick with that VFO. I never knew you were on AM until you told us, and I think that the guys in California that we often hear in the middle of the winter are doing the same thing, because I didn't hear many heterodynes this winter. Uh, being right on frequency these days is a challenge, but it has its merits. Uh, somebody had a comment. Who was that? Uh, it's KL7, Charlie Delta. I'm just going to repeat what you just said, Lynn. The only thing I was going to ask him, and I don't need to now, but I was wondering if he had the Johnson uh, sideband converter, but his uh, AM frequency is so much head-on that you don't hear any carrier at all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm more, more, and more and more into that. We have to uh, figure out how to keep our vintage radios uh, consistent with what the flex people can do. It's a whole new reality, and we're finding ways to do it. Jeff just did it. I've just about done it with my Collins uh, 310B and SV10 sideband generator. So it can be done, gentlemen. Nice work, uh, Jeff. All right, uh, let me talk to TXW and uh, CXG, and then we'll give it to Jay. WB5TXW. Hey, George. Talk to us, K5LYN. Hello, Lynn, and all around the net from WB5TXW. I'm on the F-Line equipment, 32S175S3. The 30L1, which sounds like it's pouring some coal, although I only have the mic gain on the 32S1 up about to 10 o'clock. So I've got all the other columns here up and down this table that I got from Bob almost 50 years ago. Sure 44 microphone. What have I got? 75 meter antenna fed with 450 ohm twin lead. And that's it. So I haven't blown anything up yet. Over. Sounding good, George. Yeah, and uh, uh, we'll uh, see about breakfast this Saturday morning if I get my schedule in order once again. We're busy these days, but good to hear you. Anything else for the net this evening? Well, that's it. Send me an email or I'll send you an email. Um, oh, I can tell you my brother John has been asking questions about, about what microphones to be using on tube radios, so maybe he's waking up. Anyway. WB5TXW back to net and 73 all around. Well, some of us are low. Not, I'm not lo lucky enough to have a D104 I can use right now, apparently, but there's still some good ones around. But sure, 444, you just can't go wrong, I don't think. K5CXG, hey, Bob, bring us up to date. k 5 lyn Well, not a whole lot to bring you up to date on. Uh, on the 830 and uh, Intron GLA 1000. And uh, just running through a old tuner and uh, rebuilt tuner and inverted V. And that's about it. Nothing new going on around here right now. Uh, messing around with all this old stuff, just trying to keep it going. And everybody have a good uh, week. Catch you all next week. If, uh, mm -hmm. Outstanding, Bob. Okay, I think I've talked too long, but it's a big net tonight. So, Jay, pick it up and run with it. KM5QS, K5LYN. Okay, Lynn. Was there somebody else had something just real quick? Yeah, KLO5, Sierra Alpha Charlie trying to jump in for four nights in a row. Good evening. 
Yes, sir. Uh, I got you on the list. I'll give you a holler in a little bit. Okay, yeah, thanks, Jay. Real quick, Lynn, Jay. Uh, go ahead, Jeff. JB, don't forget me. And there's Denver A, Lynn, K5LYN. There is uh, Jim, WD5JKO. Did this on one of his rigs. It's a DDS VFO with a digital output. I looked him up online, and it's a. Uh, the display that on the LCD shows uh, on this one 7.101.000 so you can really get down to the Nats whisker on that to get it uh, lined up and you can put it in place of uh, a crystal or a VFO input if you got one say like on the Viking 2 and that would be another way to stabilize a VFO on, the, on these old rigs W5 OMR. Thank you, Jay. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead, Jay. Alrighty. All right, folks. And uh, no, Denver, I've got you on the list. And, and uh, that other gentleman, I've got you also. Uh, let me run up here and start off. Well, first, this is Jay, KM5QS, and I'm on a Kenwood TS820S using a Kenwood R820 uh, as a receiver. You got them hooked up in transceive. Uh, a 922 amplifier doing, I don't know, somewhere around somewhere around a kilowatt, maybe 1,300, whatever, whatever it does. And um, another microphone to use on tube-type radios. The D104s are fine. The Turners are great. But I just love an electric voice. There's a number of them, and they all seem to work well. <laughs> Anyway, it's kind of like horse racing. We use what we uh, what works for us, and it's different radios, different things. Let me start off with um, AF5BI. James, go ahead. Hello, Jay, and everybody on the net. Uh, I'm just talk. I, I don't have a bold anchor, but I am talking on a. ICOM 746 and a Ameritron 811H with the dipole about 30 feet in air. All righty. Well, you're coming in great from you, Aldi, tonight, so it, it's a working for you. And like, you know, like Glenn said at the beginning, as long as you're interested in what we're doing, you don't have to be on a boat anchor, but one day maybe when you get one, you, you know, no problem. Yeah, Roger. I might be going to San Antonio Ham Fest coming up, and maybe I might find me one. I guess that's all I got. Uh, back to you, uh, Jay, and everybody on the net. Hello. AF5BI, we're clear. Okay, James. Good deal. Good to hear from you. All right, uh, Mr. Tom, KC5L, your turn, sir. Good evening, Jay, and the Boat Anchors Net. Tom, KC5L in San Antonio. And uh, we're on the usual site. We're talking on the Central Electronics 200B with a D104 microphone. Driving the uh, 600L amplifier, uh, doing about uh, 300 watts into a Johnson KW matchbox and a homebrew doublet up about uh, 15 feet. And we're listening on the R398. And uh, that's all I have here tonight, uh, Jay. Uh, back to you, KC5L. Okay, Tom. Well, it's, <laughs> that thing works works great for you every time. So it's uh, keep it up. Uh, let's see. Keep. That starts with K E, and that's also the next gentleman I'm going to call. Five Q. Jim, go ahead. Okay. Uh, K M five uh, Q S. Uh, this is Kilo Echo Five from Quebec, Canada. So good evening to everybody, uh, Jim and Plano. And uh, this has become the usual the last two or three weeks. Here. This is the uh, FB-104 Alpha, Pure 444, going into the uh, FB-600, uh, double bazooka 840 there, Ultimax. And uh, everybody's sounding real good tonight. And uh, uh, just a great man tonight. Uh, let you keep on going. A lot of people. KM5QS. KE5Q. Okay, Jim. Yeah, yeah, the band's good. A lot of, not near as much noise, flat and crashes, all that stuff. I think our next uh, weather maker is supposed to be coming through Sunday and Monday, so uh, let's enjoy it while we can. 
<laughs> Whiskey Bravo 5, Oscar Zulu Zulu. Go ahead, Don. Hell, there's WV501ZZ on the old Kenwood 830S. Driving the old Kenwood 922 L. Amplifier. Uh, Kenwood 922 double bazooka. Over. That sounded good. You're all there, every bit of you. And uh, anything else? That's about it. All right. Have a good one, Don. We'll see you next time. November 5, Oscar, Juliet, Bravo, the self-proclaimed weakest station in the nation. But I don't believe it. Go ahead, Dale. All right, N5 OJB, weakest station on the band. And I, uh, I'm i talking to you on a TS uh, uh, 140S, almost a boat anchor tonight. It don't have any tubes, but it's old enough. Uh, my, uh, my, my Collins uh, power supply uh, fuse went out on it, and I just now found some 5-amp fuses floating around here. So uh, maybe next week I'll have it on the air, N5 OJB, and I'll give it back to you, Jay. Okay, Denver. Now, if you plug a new fuse in that power supply and it pops it immediately, then you've got another problem. So uh, uh, hopefully it'll just be an old fuse and, and like that, and that's all the all the problems you've got. But um, yeah, um, get a hold of, uh, I don't know, Dan or... Uh, Lynn or me or something if you have any more problems with that thing and, and we'll see if we can figure out what you got. No problem. I will sure do it. Hell, I'll be like you. Uh, I'll, put a, I'll put some uh, tin foil in it. It keeps messing with me. <laughs> you better have a fire extinguisher sitting next to the bench if you do. Oh, I'm just teasing. Uh, back to you, Jay. Okay. <laughs> Good deal, Denver. All right. Um, Fred, Whiskey 5, Hotel Tango Romeo. Go ahead. Yeah, good evening, uh, Jay. Good evening, Lynn and Rusty and all the other usual suspects. And Lynette, W5HTR and Richardson. Oh, I'm talking on my trusty PR4, barefoot. And uh, the antenna is uh, inverted V. The mic is a sure 444 Delta. And I guess that's about it uh, for the rig. Enjoyed uh, the pre net chatter this evening. I was able to, glad I was able to get on a little early. And I'm enjoying listening to the net. So uh, back to you uh, uh, there, Jay. Uh, uh, KM5QS and the net, W5HTR. Comment. Oh, go ahead, comment. Yeah, Jay, uh, Static Crash took him out when he said what his rig was. Can you get that for me? Uh, it's a Drake TR4, isn't it, uh, Fred? Yep, it's a good old Jay Drake TR4. Perfect, thank you. All right, good deal. Uh, okay, thank you, Fred. Good to hear you. We'll look for you next week, or if we don't hear you before then. Uh, let me see. Mr. Adolph, Whiskey Alpha 5 IGG, your turn, sir. Yeah, good afternoon to you, Jay, and everybody out there. This is Whiskey Alpha 5, India Golf Golf. And this evening we're talking on a Hillcraft repair, the HT44 SX117. And uh, we're driving that into an LA-1000A, that's a hemp supply company. And uh, we're using the uh, D104 mic, uh, the amplified version. And so we're one of those people that are trying to operate this rig uh, in transceive, so we still haven't completely solved the uh, frequency shift problem, so hopefully we're not offending too much. But I also have to take this time to give a special thanks to uh, Mike, KL7CD, for helping me to bring up the SX-117. Uh, had a transformer failure, and Mike happened to have a parts rig, and uh, the part that, he, part that he sent worked beautifully. So anyway, again, uh, thanks and thanks and more thanks again on that help. So over to you, Jake. Okay, Adolf. Well, that's what it's all about. We can help each other out when we get a chance, and you never know. It, uh, it might turn around and, and, and work for you in the long run. But uh, sounded great. I mean, yep, you were up the band a little bit, but like, you're working on it, so 
We'll see you next week. you probably have it all figured out by then. All right. Thank you, Adolf. Kilo 5, Sierra Alpha Charlie. Your turn, sir. Oh, thank you, Jay. This is Kilo 5, Sierra Alpha Charlie. Name is Norman. I'm in Nederland, just south of Beaumont, Texas, and four weeks in a row that I remembered to check in on the net. So I guess I've got it impressed in my little brain that uh, Wednesday night is boat anchor night. Glad to be back again. The signals are terrific tonight and lots of participation, and I uh, hope the band stays like this uh, for a long time. Tonight I'm using the Great Box uh, KWM2 Wing Emblem that I'm the second owner of. Bought it in about 1968. Driving the 30L1 V104 mic. Homebrew 10 through 80 inverted V about 30 feet up on my flagpole. That's it from here, Jay, and nice to hear everybody on the air tonight. I hope I can remember next uh, Wednesday. K5 SAC back to Jay. Okay, Nora. <laughs> I tell you what. Now, if anybody wanted an example of how a Collins rig ought to sound, and, and I mean, with a 30 foot antenna. He's doing a damn good in from in interpretation of a broadcast station. Norman, that's the best rig I've heard in a long time. Uh, Collins or otherwise. It just sounds just it just sounds good. Solid. It's, it's, uh, no drips or under errors, it just sounds really good. And no, I don't want anything. It just sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for checking in. Oh, you're swelling my head, Jay. Don't do that. Well, I got a feeling you know a little bit about what goes inside that, goes on inside that gray box. That probably has something to do with it. Uh, but anyway, no, we appreciate you checking in, Norman. Come on back. Keep coming back. All right. Well, uh, that I'm. Uh, my list is at the end. So, uh, Mr. Rusty WK5R from KM5QS, it is your turn, sir. Comment. Go ahead, Go ahead, Dan. Oh, yeah. Hey, two quick things. Uh, one, uh, Mike, on that uh, Loud and Boomer, if you uh, get a chance, see if you can download a manual for that. It was a company called Radio Industries made them originally, and then Helicrafters started in or picked them up. Pretty much very similar anyway, but uh, you'll be shocked at how they say to run that 3 400. Uh, that was one thing. The other thing is, for Denver there with his uh, power supply, I just happened to think, um, make sure you've got that umbilical cord connected properly at both ends, because I know you had it in wrong one time. Okay, W-O-Z, that's it. Okay. Okay, Rusty, you there? Yeah, KM5QS, WK5R. All right, good evening, everybody. This is WK5R, and you're listening to the Boat Anchors Unlimited Net. And like I said earlier before the net, I'm running my usual stuff. I have, I got something I'm going to check into on my, heli my helicopter HC-37. Maybe later on this fall, I'll have it running again. It's going to be the summer before I can do anything to it. But anyway, I'm on a usual TS-590S, the audio technical microphone, the Homebrew GS35B amplifier and the homebrew fan dipole. Hello. Ah, I can't see what that says over there. Ah, looks like about 1,200 watts. Anyway. All right, who else is out there for the Bone Anchors Unlimited? Come now. MOE, Papa Tango. Okay, I got two there. MOE and Papa Tango. Uh, MOE, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, good evening, everybody on the net this evening. It's been a while since I've been had, had the chance to check in. I, I read the mail uh, quite often without checking in, but uh, it's always good to hear all these old radios coming on. <laughs> uh, tonight we're uh, we must be the Collins Club tonight. Tonight I'm on uh, one of the KW. I'm on the KWM 2A uh, transceiver, and um, I've got a it it. Uh, it driving the 30L1. These are both round emblems. And then uh, um, the microphone is a, actually a, it's a Shure 450. Looks looks almost identical to 444. I think it's got switchable impedance is what the difference is on the base underneath. But uh, I'm on that 
450 mic and we're driving a driving it into an antenna it's it's actually the the uh, the original high gain uh, high q trap uh, it's a 2kw rated uh, dipole uh, they're metal traps it's really a pretty cool dipole system it's been around forever i run them forever <laughs> <laughs> I got a couple of these antennas. Anyway, that's kind of the rundown on the station and, and projects here that I'm working on. The problem is I got too many projects, but different radios. But my latest acquisition is a good old boat anchor. I, I, I found, I've been looking for a nice clean one. Uh, was a, of all things, a Halicrafter S38C. <laughs> somebody, somebody, it's real clean, but somebody uh, had it set up for their station and they had it, they had a TR switch uh, inside it. It was all neatly done. They took the ACDC part out, they put a transformer in it, basically didn't modify the rest of it, and it's just as clean as can be, and it's a, it's a pretty hot sounding little radio for what it, what it is. Good general shortwave wrist sister, but I'm going to put that up, I'm going to pair it up. I think that's what I'm going to pair up with this, uh, this, uh, what is this? transmitter the, the TBS 450C. That was the two of them. Put them, put, put them on AM and see what happens. Anyway, but anyway, it's sure good to hear all uh, everybody on here and uh, and listening to the radio. That's what I like a lot the best. All right, and y'all have a good evening. WA5MOE. Comment. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Sounds like the uh, comments are stacking up against us. And comment, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the TBS. It's actually a TBS 50C AM rig. I have the 50D here, which, and I put it on the air a time or two. I have the original power supply and the original CFO. And uh, the C model, you'll have to use a carbon mic. But there's uh, quite a few articles on building a mic preamp that you can put in there, which is the D model has that, and then you can run a crystal high impedance mic uh, on that rig. I get a lot of compliments on the audio on that rig. Of course, it's AM, and uh, the VFO really drifts bad, but it, you can also use crystals. And of course, it's solid, and it's an 807 in the final, and two 6L6s in the modulator, and it's a plate modulated rig. It really sounds great. Congratulations on getting one. Well, thank you. I, uh, I got it from Sammy a long time ago, and this is the D. I said C. Uh, this is the D version, and I got the VFO with it. And you like, like you said, I'm prepared to. Probably that thing's going to drift around, but I don't have any problems putting a crystal, putting a crystal uh, uh, in it for checking into the net. But it, this one's just super clean. I mean, it's like all original. And when I saw that, I just had to have it. I used to see it in the catalogs, you know, the Harrison Radio uh, uh, catalogs and all the ones back in the 60s. Uh, I always wondered what one of them looked like. And this thing even has two meters on it. Can you believe that? That's, they put uh, 144 megahertz on it. Yeah, right. It'll do six and two meters, but I'll tell you what, 807, he's kind of straining. There's not a lot of tuning going on. Yeah, well, I'm not going to put it on two meters. I just want to put it on and pair it up with something old. And I think this uh, this uh, little receiver, the guy did a bunch of little things to it on that S38C to uh, to uh, make it. You know, he was obviously he was running CW with it. So, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> anyway, and uh, and uh, so we'll just see how it works out. I got plenty of receivers over here that I that'd be overkill. I don't want to put a, a 51J4 or you know a 75A4 or anything like that with it. I want something that's that, that's a poor boy rig like what I had back in the in the day. Now, Roger. Well, congratulations. It's a fun rig to play with, and. Uh, Hope you get a lot of enjoyment out of it. And good luck with the power supply. It'd be real easy to build up one. Uh, finding one that's uh, actual uh, original Harvey Wells um, power supply is pretty, they're like hand's teeth. Okay, back to you there, Rusty. One comment. Uh, okay, I have comment. the power supply. I have the power supply, and I, it works. The only problem I have is I think the voltages are a little high, uh, maybe due to the, the line voltage being increased higher. Uh, I'm going to probably have to do some kind of a um, 
some way to cut it down, but I do have the power supply, and it's a working power supply, and it's the matching one. Put a variac in front of it. Yeah, well, I put a variac in front, but I need to tie it down in it uh, some way, uh, and I don't want to waste a variac on it. I'll, f I'll figure it out. I'll come up with some with some kind. I've, used, I've run bucking transformers for the high voltage for That's probably my first first thing I'll do. It'll just modify the power supply a little bit. Okay, and for both of the mics, don't drink the finals in those high hikes. <laughs> Okay, who's next for the Bonecker's Unlimited Hour Pup? Papa Tango, go ahead. Yeah, Rusty, good evening to you and Jay and everyone on the net this evening. This is Paul up in Jasper, Texas. W5 FPT, Whiskey 5 Forever Pay in Texas. Seen you over on the 520S, uh, running about uh, 45 watts, I guess, out into a LK450 no tune. Uh, amplifier single three dash five hundred into a um, uh, uh, a G five RV yeah G five RV tonight up at about thirty five feet and the microphones an MC fifty and uh, boy the the band was really good here earlier it's starting to fall on me though but uh, sounds good now Rusty good to hear you everyone take care have a great day W five FPT. Okay, Paul. Yeah, the keyboard's sounding good as usual there, and I can hear you tonight. The uh, band's a lot quieter than it was last week. All right, who else is out there for the Boat Anchors Unlimited? Come now. Whiskey Alpha 5 Delta Sierra Sierra. Two zero S E D. All right, I got two there. All right, Delta Sierra Sierra, go ahead. Yes, WA5 DSS, uh, Bill in uh, Kerrville. And tonight we're running a uh, Kenwood TS uh, 520, the original uh, 520 that came out in the uh, early 70s. Uh, <clears throat> so that's about it. Uh, everybody's sounding pretty good, the ones I've heard. Uh, WA5 DSS, back to net. Okay, Bill, sounding good from Kirby. Got uh, Kerrville down there. Uh, Bill. The Kerrville down there. My tongue ain't working right now. That Kenwood uh, 520 is sounding good there. All right, over to you, Steve. K0SCD, go ahead. Well, good evening, Rusty and all the boat anchors. K0SCD and Tyler. And uh, again tonight, a crusty old Kenwood 520. A lot of them around. This one's pushing a 301 and into a fan dipole up 40 odd feet. And uh, I guess that's about it from Tyler. Uh, I suppose I'll see you and a whole bunch of others on uh, Saturday morning over at Emory. Hope so. Anyway, everybody have a good week. K0 SCD. Yeah, Steve, uh, you will if my paycheck gets here in time. Because <laughs> i got to have some money to buy some gas to get over there, but I'm hoping it'll show up. All right, we'll catch you later there, and your 520 sounds good, too. All right, who's next for the Bowen Anchors Unlimited? Come now. Anybody else out there that wants to check into the Boat Anchors Unlimited net? Come now. Well, I think I fished the pond dry there, Lynn. K5LYN and WK5R. Your turn again. All right, Rusty. Do I sound like I'm in the ballpark here? K5LYN. Pretty darn close. Go for it. Okay. Boy, it's been a spectacular net tonight. We've uh, we've taken a lot of check-ins, and we've exchanged a lot of great information, and I've learned a lot myself, so this is this is what it's all about. All right. Uh, who else wants to take uh, some... Uh, who wants to uh, talk vintage radio this evening uh, about a radio you're working on, about a radio you've got and you need to fix, or a radio you want to have? Buy, sell, trades are appropriate if they're vintage radio related. Who else for the net, K5LYN, listening. WA5EDX. EDX and TXW. No, uh, EDX and uh, Bill, I'll get you in a minute. <laughs> EDX, Byron, talk to us. Yeah, Lynn and everybody on the net tonight, uh, good evening. Uh, been a hot one up here in Bluffdale today, almost to record, about uh, 94 degrees, I think. And the wind's been blowing non-stop, so that just adds to the heat, I think. Uh, tonight we're on a uh, Swan 500C. I'm still on my little Swan kick. And this is a Swan 500C that I 
the old fell sitting around on the floor last week and thought, well, I'll check that out. So I've been working on it and finally got it going today. So uh, this is the first contact I've made with it. Just wonder how it sounds uh, down there in Austin and around the net. Same old uh, D104 talk driving it and uh, into the same old inverted V. And, of course, as always, I'm barefoot. K5LYN, WA5EDX. Okay, Byron. Hey, you know, I, I'm kind of sold on the Swan 500. I've owned a couple of them. They're amazingly good radios and not hard to work on, and you've done a nice job on that one. What all did you have to do to it to get it up and running? Oh, main thing, just uh, run the garden hose over, clean it up, and then uh, go from there and put a couple of finals in it. I don't think it had any 6, 6LQ6s in it, or they had been robbed, so... Uh, uh, that and uh, just clean up stuff, you know, clean pots, clean switches. Uh, other than that, I don't think anything showed up that's been burned up yet. Uh, last week I was on a 500, and uh, there is some difference between, you know, this teaches me the difference between a 500 and a 500C. Uh, they both kind of look the same on the front panel. Uh, but the 500 is actually more like a Swan 350 in that it runs uh, six, six HF5s in the finals, whereas the 500C has six LQ6s. And also, they moved some stuff, like the power resistors, they moved them from the bottom of the rig up to the back back panel inside the, on, uh, above the chassis so I guess that was to get uh, heat away from the VFO or something like that anyway so just little differences like that on the 500C so it's always hard to keep all that on these swans straight but thanks for the signal report K5LYN WA5EDX Okay, Byron. I wish I had uh, known you back then, but once I had a Swan, it said fi Swan 500 on the front panel. You turned it around the back, and it said 350 on the back. So, uh, you know, I never knew how that happened. Maybe Swan in, in those years just used what they had in stock and sold it to people. I don't know. Nice work. Uh, nice work, Byron. Anything else for that this evening? No, not really. I think Swan was bad about that, using up old stock, and uh, that doesn't surprise me. They're... Uh, their configuration control was probably uh, pretty non-existent. Yeah, it was fun to have, though. Very good. Nice work on that station. K5AXW. Hey, Bill, bring us up to date. K5LYN. Okay, K5LYN in the net. K5AXW. Uh, everybody sounded really good tonight. Uh, amazingly quiet. Uh, that'll change in a little while uh, if we ever get storms. Running the NCX3, uh, it's being fed by a paging microphone with a voice max processor, getting a little bit of help from the FL2100B, and uh, it's pegging the meter at 500 watts. I haven't changed the elements in the through line panel meter. Uh, that goes out to a direct burial RG6 to a off center fed dipole 6 feet off the ground to uh, accommodate the HOA. Uh, inspectors that like to roam the area. I've been having a lot of fun uh, just making that antenna work better and better with stub matching and other uh, uh, tweaks to get things going. Um, that's pretty much it here. I've got a lot to work on, but not a whole lot of time. And uh, Sorry I missed uh, Belt, uh, CJ, and uh, Rusty up there in New Lynn. Uh, maybe in October. Uh, had a memorial service to do and produce uh, that takes the priority, unfortunately. Uh, bad timing, I guess, <laughs> as it always seems to be. K5LYN in the net. K5AX stuff. Nice work on that station. And let me tell you, we have a friend down in the, the Katy, Houston area, Katy, Texas, a W1BG, W1 Big Gun, who has an antenna on his uh, fence 
just like yours, six feet. But his antenna, he has done some amazing work. It's it's absolutely equal to any signal I've ever heard out of his area down there. It's incredibly nice work. So if you want any other ideas, you could always uh, send him a note there. So he's done some spectacular work. All right, uh, very nice uh, on that station. By the way, since uh, you and I last visited, I, I restored a NCX3 that I got in the state sale. <laughs> it's not as good as yours. I have it looking pretty good. I got a replacement front panel for it and recapped it. I've got some instability in the VFO, but other than that, it's working more or less. Anyway, good to hear you. Anything else for the net this evening? <laughs> Well, instability in the VFO seems to be the nature of the beast. I'm still uh, tuning the knob here. I, it hasn't had enough time to warm up, but uh, that was the characteristic of the day. But uh, good luck with it, and I'm glad you got it back up on the air. Yeah, I called the net with it a couple of times. It's uh, <laughs> it's no Collins, but it's fun, and it's a pretty radio. All right, uh, let's see. Anybody else for the net this evening? K5LYN, listening? WA5EIJ. EIJ. Hey, man, we've been missing you. Uh, hello, Lynn, and everybody. This is Joseph, WA5EIJ. Uh, Byron, you got a really great signal on that Swan, buddy. Don't change a thing. Uh, Lynn, I'm sorry, I just walked in the door. I do not, I am not on a vintage rig. I apologize to the net. I just want to say hello. WA5EIJ, back to net. We're well, coming and say hello more often. Hey, we've been missing you. And uh, we always say that uh, anybody's welcome. It's what we're doing. Don't have to be on a vintage radio at any one time. But we know you've got a room full of them down there. So good to hear you, Joseph. Uh, squeeze us into your schedule more often, okay? Comment. Right, and also, you have a very, very good signal right on frequency. You are, you're within one or two cycles of being perfect. Thank you, sir. Over. Comment. Go ahead, Jay. Yes, sir. Uh, Joseph, you know you can key up any time. We're just glad to know you're still with us. Sure. Good to hear you. Just walk in the door. All right. Tell your bride hi for me, KM5QS. Contact, Byron. Go ahead, Byron. Yeah, uh, Joseph, I tell you what, it must be a God thing or something different or something. I was laying in bed uh, uh, this morning and woke up early and laying there, and I was thinking, what the hell happened to Joseph? I hadn't talked to him in years. So uh, I must have been, uh, you know, something was happening there. But uh, send me an email. You check out my email. I'm emails good on QRZ and send me a phone number. And let's catch up. Thanks, Lynn. I've okay. Been selling, I've been selling houses. That's where I've been. Well, well, work us into the schedule because <laughs> we miss you. Good to hear you, Joseph. Anything else for the net this evening? No, you guys carry on. All right. Anybody else? K5LYN listening. Alpha Delta Charlie. ADC, Rick. Good evening, Lynn, and everybody on the net. This is Rick, WD5 Alpha Delta Charlie, ADC, in Harlingen, Texas. And Lynn, tonight I'm on the KWM2. Uh, 312B5 and the receivers, the 75A4, sure 444 mic, and the 3001 amp into the same inverted V antenna. This thing was getting lonely, so I thought I'd turn it on. It's working great. Yeah, I'm on the Collins S line too, Rick. Uh, I usually keep this on uh, 20 meters, but I didn't have enough time to warm up my more vintage, quaint stuff, so I pulled it down from 20, and I'm on Collins tonight too. So uh, we're, we're, we're Collins to Collins, and I hope mine sounds as good as yours. Now, you sound real good. Uh, you always do. Okay, any new projects in the works? Um, just maintenance I'm going to have to do on some of this stuff it, uh, because I wasn't using it like I should. So I'm going to have to take it apart and do some maintenance on uh, just minor stuff. Well, I know the feeling. These things can play tricks on us. Uh, they do me for sure. Okay, anything else for the group before I give uh, Jay a chance to talk here? No, uh, enjoy talking to you all. Uh, 73, WD586. Okay, we'll one more time. Over to you, K5LYN. <laughs> okay, Lynn. Man, tonight's been a hoot so far. I sure was glad to hear Joseph back in there. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this is Jay, KM5QSN. Is there anyone we've missed or wants to recheck or has anything for the Boat Anchors Unlimited? Come now. Hello, Mike 5 Alpha Golf. 
Paul. Good afternoon, Alex. Uh, KM5. No, wait a minute. Yeah. KM5AG, go ahead. Hey, hey, evening time to you. We try in one of my old girlies. It's the um, Yesu 1000 Mark 5. Has not been used in over five years. Um, it's got the matching power supply and, of course, the matching speaker. We're doing about 175 watts into a home brewer and tiller. Kilo Mike Five, Alpha Oh, it's plenty. It's got, it's got, <clears throat> it's got all you need and then some. It might be a little bit high on the mic game, uh, but uh, the radio's working good. Okay, thanks, man. We just played with it, so we'll spend some more time with Jay. It's one of my favorite, but hardly used. Thanks so much, Jay. Kilo Mike Five, Alpha Gal, Fiskar. All right. Thank you, Alex, for checking in. Appreciate it. All right. Anyone else for the boat anchors unlimited to come now, please? Whew. Well, so far it's been 29. Who's going to be 30? Our number th the number 30 slot. We're looking for another check-in. Come for, <laughs> for the boat anchors unlimited. Come on down. Whiskey 5, Hotel Foxtrot. Well, that'll work. HF, go ahead, sir. Yeah, hello, Jay. Uh, this is Dara in Kunks, Texas, W5HF, uh, operating uh, just by the power of the rig on a uh, Kenwood S830. Uh, I have the... The VFO 230, I have the SM220, and a matching speaker there. Well, that's all you need, isn't it? Well, maybe the MC50, you probably need that, over. Well, that would help, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would do it. No, it sounds fine. And say that, uh, I've, still got, I've still got about half that stuff sitting around here, but I don't have an 830 anymore. The rest of it still works good. Anyway, you're sounding fine. Okay, thanks a lot for uh, getting me checked in. Whiskey 5, high frequency, 73. Roger, roger, 73 to you. Thanks for checking in. Anyone else for the boat anchors? Well, hey, Rusty, maybe the band's picked up on your end again now, so go ahead, sir. KM5QS to WK5R. Yeah, KM5QS, WK5R. Lynn, you want me to shut her down if I don't get nobody? Well, we've, uh, we're over an hour here. Yeah, let's see if there's anybody that's uh, been waiting patiently that whole hour to talk to us. We ought to pick them up. Failing that, we probably ought to wind it down. K5LY and great net tonight. Okay. All right, is there anybody else out there that uh, we haven't talked to yet that wants to check into the Bone Anchors Unlimited net? Come now. Well, we may have pitched the pond dry there, but I'll make this the last call. Anybody else out there anywhere that you do not have to be on a, a vintage radio if you're just interested in what we're doing, uh, you want to check into the Boat Anchors Unlimited net, come now. Well, that sounds like it. <laughs> it's been a good day tonight. The band has been fantastic. We thank all y'all for checking in, because Lynn, Jay, myself, and uh, uh, a bunch of the rest of you know what it takes to keep things on the air and keep them going. And it sounds like the Collins went out tonight. <laughs> I think we had more than we did anything else. But anyway, appreciate y'all checking in, and we'll catch you next week. Well, this is WK5R, now closing the Boat Anchors Unlimited net and returning this frequency to normal amateur abuse, WK5R. Hey, Rusty, this is Joseph. You owe me a new picture that knocked off the wall with your signal. <laughs> oh, I'm that strong, huh? You're knocking it off another one. Oh, well. Uh, let, let me know how many glasses i got to replace, and we'll maybe see you at Belton or something. Thank you, sir. All right, things in Tom Ball, Joseph, WA5EDX. Uh, I don't know. I've been on the road selling the house downtown. For three years? <laughs> Well, I got a, uh, I had a few of them, you know. Man, how long has it been since you were at Belton? Uh, one or two at least. So pre-pandemic. 
<laughs> I, I'm not even, I'm on my flex. That's the only thing I got that'll work as far as, everything else is covered up. With, covered up with what? Uh, stuff to get so it doesn't, uh, uh, you know, have dust on it and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I know how that real estate can, uh, can uh, be uh, more than a full-time job. So, uh, I don't know, you let me keep you too busy, I think. Well, I'm trying to retire and quit doing it, but I keep getting these deals. You've been well, hearing that for long yeah, enough. The deal's only worth so much, but, uh, you know, if you can't play with radios or enjoy it, so, uh, well, I guess you could leave it all to me, though, when you go, so just go down and change your wheel. Don't hold your breath. I heard somebody else say hello. Yep, hello, Joseph. Howdy, uh, BR549. Yep, yep, good to hear you. I'm glad you, you're still percolating there. Just, you need to get away from that other crap. I uh, ain't that the darn truth. I almost slipped there, didn't I? You guys carry on. And it's good to hear you all. But you're still living at the ranch, right? Still at the ranch. Okay, well, I know where to find you. We hardly ever make it down to Houston anymore, that's for sure. 73. You're just showing signs of intelligence, that's all. <laughs> well, I can't take the humidity. The humidity got up to about uh, 49% here today. I like to die. I heard the temp. Yeah, 94. It, it was warm. Hey, Lynn, Jay, Rusty, that's one of the best nets in a while. I mean, conditions were great. Everybody was coming in great here. And I uh, talked about a lot of fun things. And I hope it's that good next week. Hail 7 Charlie Delta. Oh, yeah, Mike. It was great. Uh, I didn't, there wasn't anybody I couldn't hear, I don't think. You know if Matt recorded tonight? I don't know. He's been, he's been recording the last few weeks, so uh, hopefully he did. Oh, ah, there he is. Well